should always be well informed about any piece of equipment that you're going to invest in for your photography. And that is definitely true for the lens I'm going to review today, which is the Voigtlander 23mm f1.2 for the X-mount. CameraQuest.com, the North American distributor of Voigtlander lenses, has a quote on their website that describes the 23mm f1.2 and the 35mm f1.2 for the Fujifilm system as character lenses when shot wide open, but sharpened significantly by the time you're at 5.6. That alone is a succinct description of what to expect from this lens, but that still doesn't give you quite the whole story. So what I hope today is to give you a little bit of insight into my experience shooting with this lens. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be a little more informed to know whether this lens is a good investment for what you shoot and for your kit. Let's go over some tech specs and information about this lens before I give you my thoughts on it. So it's a 23 millimeter lens, which is a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent on the Fujifilm system. It has an aperture range of f1.2 to f16 with a third stops. It has 10 elements in six groups. It has 12 aperture blades, filter diameter size of 46 millimeters, and a weight of 219 grams. It has electrical contacts, which communicates with the camera to send information such as EXIF data, focus check, parallax correction on an X-Pro3, IBIS information for X-H1, X-T4, or newer cameras, as well as the shooting distance or your focus distance. The price is $699 on CameraQuest.com, brand new and use the price varies. Keep an eye on camera quest if you want to purchase this lens new or used, although I'm sure there are used copies floating around in KEH or used photo pro or eBay at any point in time. As long as the lens is in good shape, I think this is a good investment whether it's new or used. You just have to decide for yourself whether that price is worth it or not, but hopefully this video will give you a little bit more uh, information in order to make that decision. I always try to do a positives and negatives list for, for the pieces of equipment I use. Let's go over these negatives to get them out of the way, and then I'll get to the positives and my user experience with this lens. So the biggest negative that many people have brought up, and it's extremely valid, on the focus ring, when you go all the way to infinity, it stops just a little bit past infinity. So you have to dial it back just a little bit to get something in the distance in sharp focus. Now you get used to this little quirk and it doesn't become a big deal after a while, but it would be nice to be able to really utilize that, that final stop on the focus ring to stop at infinity. Practically speaking, the, on the usability part of this lens, that's really the only negative. I'll go through some of the other negatives that other people have brought up that may be a concern to you. The most possible obvious negative for you is the price. It's a few hundred dollars more than Fujifilm's 23 millimeter F2 and roughly around the same price as the old school 2314 from Fujifilm and close, pretty close to the new 2314. So the price could be a negative for you. Another possible negative for you when using this lens is it does have a long focus throw. It's probably about three quarters of a turn to, to focus from the closest distance to infinity. So compared to some other smaller lenses, it takes a little bit to get through the whole focus range. To some people that is a negative, but for to me, for a lens like this that has a f1.2 aperture that can give you a shallow depth of field, having being able to precisely focus is extremely beneficial to me. But I put it in the possible negatives because I understand for some people it could be. Another possible negative is that it's not super sharp wide open. It's a little soft wide open, but that's pretty much exactly how it's advertised. So this is nothing to be surprised about. This is definitely something to keep in mind if that bothers you. This is not the lens, this is not the lens to get if you want sharpness throughout the complete aperture range. This is not the lens to get if you want perfection. If you want extremely sharp, this is not the lens to get. So this is something that, that could be and will be a deal breaker for many people. Some people think they want a character lens and then they shoot it wide open expecting perfection and they expect no color fringing and they expect you know no ghosting and all these things. And these so-called character lenses has have some of these, if not all of these characteristics. All right, now to the positives. One of the biggest positives to me and probably to a lot of other people is the build quality. It is a Voigtlander lens. It lives up to the reputation that Voigtlander has created. 
It's all metal and glass, of course. All the markings on the lens itself are engraved. All the little details and aspects that you'd expect from a well-built lens. Materials, the feel, the little attention to detail, like the etched-in numbers and letters, as well as the focus distance scales having different colors. The feet measurement is in red and the metric meters are in white which is extremely handy to see the difference right away when you're looking down. I like the design as well. I think the design has a good cross between a modern lens and a vintage feel. I like this kind of focus ring, the tactile grip on it all the way around, and the aperture ring has a little grip on the bottom and on the top it has the numbers. Both are easy to use, both are well made and super smooth. Although the, obviously the aperture is clicked, which is another positive. One of the other big positives is that because it has the electrical contacts on the lens, it can transmit a lot of information to the camera. So it can communicate EXIF data, focus distance. It can change, it can uh, do parallax correction on an X-Pro3. It can tell the camera what the lens is for the IBIS, so the camera can adjust appropriately. So it can, it, communicating to, to the camera is a really, really sweet benefit on a manual focus lens. Even just having that EXIF data on your images when you go to review them is super, super handy. You can see when you're at f2 or f, f2.8 or 1.2 or whatever. And I like having that information. It helps me when I'm reviewing my images and kind of getting an idea of where the lens shines and where I like to shoot the lens and stuff like that. Now that feature doesn't work on every camera. If you search Cosina's site, they have a list of compatible cameras that work with the electrical contacts and then the list that the cameras that don't. The list of cameras that work with the electrical contacts is pretty broad. There's a handful of the X-Trans 3 cameras and almost all cameras that were made after the X-Trans 3 cameras work with this lens in terms of transmitting the electrical information from the lens to the camera. Now, if you don't have one of those cameras and you have an X-T1, let's say an X-T10, X-Pro1, X-Pro2, this lens is still great, still fantastic. I've, I played around with it a little bit on, on an X-T1 and loved it. It just won't transmit that data and it won't do automatic parallax co uh, correction on an X-Pro1 or X-Pro2. But it's still worth it, I think, for any Fujifilm camera user, no matter what model you have. I'm never one to say that you buy a 1.2 lens only to shoot a 1.2. I never do that, that's not my mentality. And I don't think you should make a big investment like this with that thought frame in mind. A lens should be useful in many scenarios. And especially if you're shooting street photography, it's very tough to do a lot of shooting at 1.2. You can definitely do some, and I did, and I will continue to do that. But I shoot a lot at 5.6 and f8. And I love the way this lens looks in those aperture ranges. So it's really nice to be able to get a nice, sharp, detailed image at those aperture ranges, but then open up to give me a vintage look, to give me some softness, to give me a little vignetting, to give me a shallow depth of field, as well as an extremely close focus distance. Having the best of both worlds, so to speak, is great for me. And this is what this, in, the, in my mind, this is what this lens delivers. Is it the sharpest lens at 5.6 and f8? Probably not. I don't do side-by-side -side comparisons. Is it sharp enough to make you feel like you're getting what you're going for? Does it feel like, does it leave you feeling lack, like you're lacking in any area? It never did for me. It delivered where I expected to and where I hoped it to. What I hope to do is show you some image samples that give you an idea of some of the stuff that I was inspired to shoot with it and may inspire you to imagine what you can shoot with it as well. Uh, I shoot mostly city and street stuff. I, I'll shoot people when I'm in a setting where I feel like capturing the people around is part of of the environment and it works. Other times I don't shoot people, I shoot the buildings and details and, and just anything that helps me capture the mood and vibe of the city I live in, the city I love to shoot. There's really nothing else I would want to ask of this lens in terms of image quality. We've talked about image quality, now let's talk about what it's like using this lens. I mean, there's not a lot to it. It's a manual focus 23 millimeter lens. What could be unique or different about using it? If Fujifilm were to make a manual focus line of lenses, 
they could be a lot like these lenses here. Built the same way, similar focal distance, similar aperture range, and, and similar build quality. As well as the electrical contacts that talk to the camera so you can get the full experience and get the full benefits of a digital camera with the tactile manual focus experience like any other old school manual focus lens. So when you're using it with the EVF, it has the capability of automatically zooming in to do focus check. So as soon as you start turning the manual focus ring, just like on a Fujifilm branded lens, it will automatically zoom in for your focus check. So you can get critical focus quickly. Or you could turn that off so it doesn't do that as soon as you turn the focus ring. Either way, you have that capability. The other thing you have in terms of helping you focus is that not only do you have focus distance markings on the lens itself, but it also communicates that information to the camera. So your focus distance scale in the EVF changes appropriately, just like if you're manually focusing a Fujifilm lens. These are really, really great benefits because it helps you move quickly, it helps you be precise. Um, so you can look down at the, at the lens and see I'm three feet away or seven feet away, so I'll, I'll set to that range or just the same in looking in the camera, I can see the, the focus distance range so I can be really efficient. The last thing in terms of focusing that I'll talk about is that because of the long focus throw, you can get really precise even when wide open. So it does help you get critical focus because you can dial it in, take your time and dial it in. Now, if you're not shooting wide open and you wanna shoot uh, at 5.6 or higher and do zone focusing or range focusing, you can do that really easily as well, whether you're looking through the EVF, um, only looking through the EVF, or if you're looking down at the camera, uh, maybe down at the screen or doing waist level shooting, and you're, and you're at 5.6 or F8, it's easy to see that focus distance scale on the lens itself. That was really, really fun to do when I'm out shooting with this lens, shooting street photography with this lens. A handful of the image samples were shot that way. Sometimes I nailed it, sometimes I didn't. But with more practice, I was able to hit more and more of those shots. Because it's a wide focal length, and because I was shooting at a closed down aperture like 5.6 or f8, I was able to get a decent focus range so I could be quick on the street and shoot street photography in the similar style that these old school street photographers did. A manual focus lens might intimidate some people. It's worth it, it's fun, and it's really not that hard once you practice with it. You're, sometimes you're not always as fast as an autofocus lens, but at the same time, you're in control of it. You know you can, you know exactly the point on the, on the photograph that you wanna focus to. You're not, you're not hoping that it tracks or catches the right thing. You can look at and focus directly to the, the element in the image that you wanna to focus to. This might be my favorite street photography lens that I've ever used on the Fujifilm system for multiple reasons. One is I'm finally really, really getting comfortable and used to this focal length. It's taken me a while, uh, but I really, really have become accustomed to it and really enjoy using it, especially for street photography. So the focal length is, is great for street photography. The aperture range is everything you need it to be. You have a complete range all the way down to F16. You have clicks on the aperture. Uh, it talks to the camera so you can see the number of f-stop that you're at in the EVF, as well as that's saved in the image XF data as well. The manual focus ring is smooth and nice to use. It has a long throw so you can get precise focus and it's really comfortable when you're holding it. Some lenses don't feel very comfortable when you're sitting there having to focus a lot and this one is. And I love the images that come out of it. Using it on the street and coming back and reviewing the images gives me just a complete experience that I've really enjoyed. I think the big negatives of this of this lens are well known and are almost advertised. Yes, it's a high price and yes, it's soft wide open and has some of those characteristics of a vintage lens wide open. But again, this has to be part of the reason you're buying it. Don't buy expecting it to be something else, hoping that maybe it's sharper than what you expect. Look at my image samples, look at image samples from other people, and really take it for what it is. It's a fantastic lens, it's a fantastic street photography lens, but it's not everything to everybody. 
if you want one of the best, if not the best, manual focus street photography experiences with your Fujifilm camera, definitely consider the Voigtlander lenses, whether it's the 23, 35, the new 27. It is wonderful to have these choices from Voigtlander. So like I said, do your research, know what you're buying, and give it a shot. It's really fun. And before I go, visit CameraQuest.com if you're in the US, if you're considering buying this lens. Sup support these small businesses like CameraQuest. I don't have an affiliate link. I just enjoy working with them. Give them some support as well as KEH and Use Photo Pro, which are other companies that I love working with too and can vouch for. Again, not affiliates, just love working with them. So that's it for now, guys. I appreciate every one of you as always, and I will talk to you again soon.